Okay, now when it comes to reference geometry, we can create a plane <coughs> on this, and you know, I think you're probably aware of the offset command. But, um, you know, I can, <coughs> you know, if you choose parallel um, as the option, you know, notice how. Um, you know how, like I said, it's uh, you know we don't, we can't enter any distances or anything, but if we select like an edge here, you know that'll make sure that that plane is still parallel to this, but also goes through that edge. So, um, so that's certainly one option, you know, for creating a plane. Now, if we choose like perpendicular, okay, we can also go down here and say, okay, well, perpendicular, but we want it going through that point. So, you know, that edge will go, it'll go through that edge, still be perpendicular to this plane, and, you know, Bob's your uncle. Um, Now, if I were to, you know, let's say, delete this, and, you know, I kind of got some experience with this the other day, but let's say we choose that, and then just automatically go over here and choose this as our second reference, it automatically creates a midplane. So, uh, I don't think we could, you know, you know, see it will start fussing at you if you try to choose something other than that. <laughs> But, you know, the point is, is that it automatically creates a midplane. Um, now, of course, you know, right now we got it still set to midplane, which is a problem. This is not green. Um, so, you know, we could say that we want it perpendicular to this face, but we want it running through. Oops. Well, that you know, has a problem with it. I don't know why. Midplane constraint. Well, I'm not quite sure why that wouldn't work, but um, anyway, let's just choose this one and then In our edge, you know, we were still in, you know, I wasn't in like perpendicular mode or anything, but I can choose like an angle. So if I wanted to make this 45 degrees, I can, and then we can flip it, you know, if you want it to be 45 degrees that way instead. So, and then of course, you know, you can create, you know, a number of different planes, you know, following that same angle, and you can do the same thing when you're in parallel mode. So, so I mean, if I go delete this, you know, for example, um, you know, we can come back down to that and, you know, choose to make more than one plane. Okay, now of course, you know, if we didn't want to do that, you know, we can select like, um, like an edge, but we're not fully defined yet, but I could select like a reference point, okay, we are fully defined, so, you know, again, a lot of different possibilities, um, you know, that's about the only two possibilities you could select there, now, of course, um, You know, I could select this as a reference point, um, and this as another reference point, you know, so that gives us that, you know, if you needed to do that for some reason. Um, or we could put a reference there if you needed to carve it through there for some reason. Okay, anyway, I'll go ahead and close out of that, and of course, you know, you can resize these planes as you want. Um, if you go to, let's go look at axes really quick. Um, 
you know, you got several different, you know, possibilities, including one line, edge, or axis, you know. But axes, you know, are good for creating revolved solids and, you know, then they're, you know, it's a little different than center lines and sketches, so it's for creating geometry, but, you know, you can create an axis like that. Um, but you could go create an axis between two planes, like, you know, like there, you know, so, like I said, you can see that that axis is on that plane, it's the intersection between these two planes. Now, you could go create between two points, so, you know, if we wanted to create an axis, you know, for some kind of weird revolve cut or something like that, you know, you can create one, you know, through there. Now, of course, we'd use this one, the cylindrical face axis. Um, and then you got, you know, point and face plane. So, you know, I could choose like this point and this plane here. And it makes an axis basically normal to that plane, but starting, you know, going through this point. So, anyway, those are kind of the various options for that, and it does create an axis object here, so that's what's nice. So, you know, if you wanted to do a revit, you know, some of these revolves or sweeps or something like that, you know, it might come in handy, uh, I don't know, for a sweep, but anyway. Now, if you want to set up a custom coordinate system for some weird reason, um, that's interesting. Um, we can go set it up by selecting a point, okay, and then, you know, uh, in this case, let's select an axis for the x direction, and let's say we want to reverse it, so positive coordinates are going that way, and let's say uh, our z direction, we want to go this way, and I guess I flipped that up, you know, anyway. Yeah, there we go. Um, and then we got our Y, but our Y, you know, I want to folk point that way. But I guess we're stuck on the X, you know, at pointing this way just because of how the coordinates work. I'm surprised that we can't just put it anywhere we want. Um, but at any rate, so, you know, that's sort of how you do that. So. Um, now I don't know if that's like a temporary coordinate system or a universal coordinate system, but anyway, yeah, it, no, it's, I don't think it's the main coordinate system, let me look at the, I'm sure our baseline planes hadn't changed, yeah, yeah, they're still going, well, yeah, they're still based on a different, uh, origin, you know, point as you can see there. So anyway. Now apparently the reason you want to change coordinate systems like that, you know, notice it shows up over here is because you're trying to evaluate mass properties or something like that. That's apparently when this is used. So, because that's why I assume for some reason I don't understand why you would need to do that in a program like this to draw, per se. Um, since this it really isn't coordinate you know, entry friendly, honestly. I'm sure you can probably do it somewhere, but, you know, anyway, I just hadn't noticed. Okay, to make my case, if we go into, you know, evaluate, we can look at mass properties here. You know, it's assigned, you know, the base coordinate system um, by default. Um, but I can choose the new coordinate system um, that we just created. So you can see how, you know, everything changes down here. So anyway, <coughs> you know, I just set uh, options to custom so it's in kilos. So at any rate, we had specified a material, so. Um, close this and um, add a material. I'll set it to steel or something. Um, uh, uh, oh, let's see, let's 
super alloy, fuck it. Okay. Now let's do, see what the center of mass said. Yeah, it's still in kilos, so yeah, it's about 2.5 kilos. So, show weld bead mass. I don't have any welds on it. So, yeah, it's got moments of inertia. Take a center of mass and align with the output coordinate system. Take an output coordinate system. Okay. Anyway, you know, I guess that center mass will be relative to our coordinate system is the whole point, and it's about 33 by 70 by 20 minus 25 millimeters, you know, given our axis. So that puts it up this way, and then, you know, um, you know, 33 this way, and um, yeah, 70 this way. So yeah, it's about right too, because it'd be about over here. So anyway, pretty cool. Okay, now I'm going to cover you know something that's been plaguing me for a while to conclude this particular video. Now let's let's um, you know draw a sketch on the top of this, and let's draw a hole that we want to always be in the center of this particular part. Well. Um, I'll just uh, say it's a nine millimeter. Uh, what we do, you know, is create a construction point between this point and say this point, and go in. Well, let me select um, select midpoint. And then I'll just apply a coincident relationship. So um, now everything's fully defined. Okay. So we exit sketch. And, you know, whoops. I have to screw to cut. Or I could have, you know, could have just made it a boss feature or some shit. But um, screw. Well, I'm just going to leave it blind. Um, yep, looks good to me. Okay, and that's how you do it. So you know, basically, um, you know, the part here. Uh, oops. You know, the part here error changes in length. You know, like so. Um, you know, that hole is still always going to be in the middle. So, anyway, 